Good evening and welcome to Chasing the Facts. I'm your host, Sam Chase, and that's a little bit of a special program we're having tonight because uh, tonight's subject is the 4th of July uh, Chelmsford Parade. And with us this evening are Paige Gillette, who is co-chair, one of three co-chairs of the Chelmsford Parade Committee, and Kirk Marshall of the Parade Committee. So welcome to the show and uh, we're glad to have you. And Hopefully, we'll be able to get some uh, good information out to the uh, public about the upcoming parade. So uh, what we do, with, especially with new guests, first-time uh, folks on the show, we ask for just a little bit of a, a biography. So we'll start with you, Paige. Yep, my name's Paige Gillette. I am um, a townie. Grew up in Chelmsford, mm -hmm. Chelmsford High School, 20, 2010. Um, Ouch. I <laughs> work at Redmo Graphics with my father. I'm head of operations and customer service there. I'm on the board of directors of the Chelmsford Business Association, and this year is my first time being a co-chair on the parade committee. Very good. And Kirk? And my name's Kirk Marshall. I, uh, I grew up in Chelmsford, moved away for a few years, and then came back in 2002. Uh, currently, I'm the president of the Chelmsford Business Association. Um, I also serve on the Arts and Technology Education Fund here in town, and uh, I'm a member of the parade committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, chief cook and bottle washer for what? Table of Plenty. Table of Plenty. I'm also, yes, right. I cook every other week at the Table of Plenty here in Chelmsford. And he didn't bring anything for us to eat, but that's, <laughs> that's okay. That's next that's okay. Tuesday next, when I cook. Next Tuesday you cook. Okay. You got it. That's good. Well, we have the uh, upcoming parade, and this has become uh, a very uh, significant event in, uh, in Chelmsford and also regionally. I would call this the regional uh, 4th of July parade. So... Um, just to situate it a little bit, I'm not going to go into a lot of the history, but uh, the parade goes back many, many years. Uh, the first uh, recorded uh, video I saw of the parade, I think dated from 1955, and I think the parade actually is older than that. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the, the current iteration of the parade really started with the 350th uh, celebration of the town, which was uh, held in 2005. And that year, the Lions Club uh, managed uh, most of the activities for the 4th of July parade, put the whole thing together, uh, sponsored as they, as they continue to sponsor the, uh, the country fair the night before, the band concert and everything. And that was a, uh, that was a very well-planned and well-executed event. And very shortly thereafter, a uh, group of citizens got together and said, because uh, the Lions Club indicated that they probably wouldn't be able to sustain that going forward, uh, a group of uh, very civic-minded people, uh, people like uh, Lynn Marcella and Jeff Hardy, for example, they decided, you know what, we really need to form a dedicated committee uh, to manage uh, the parade, plan for the uh, events and so forth, and make sure it comes off uh, as a first-class event. So. I, I really start with 19 years ago as, as, sure. the, draw, as the jump off point. So it's uh, really kind of gotten bigger and better every year since then. At least that's my perception. So um, Paige, you said that this was, uh, you know, you're really uh, fairly new to the committee. If mm -hmm. This is what, your third year? Yep. Third year. Um, but I have to say that you are really the the key organizational person, uh, very well organized, and uh, the meetings that we have are kind of free-flowing, to say the least, <laughs> sort of informal. And You know, Paige uh, very patiently sits at the meetings and listens to all the crosstalk, and then at the end says, okay, fellas, so here's what we're going to do, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And, then we, uh, and then we go from there. <clears throat> so um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, the... Uh, cost of the parade and how it's funded and so forth. So either one of you can, can take that. Sure. What, what the biggest fundraising event we do for the parade is the selling of banners that many of the townspeople see hung in Center Square, Drum Hill, and Vinyl Square. 
and all those, there's no taxpayer money involved, all of those banners are sold to businesses or private citizens, and um, those banners are hung by the DPW um, in those prominent locations, and it really sets a nice tone for the parade. Mm -hmm. I'll pass it off to you because once we, once, um, we go out and sell these banners, Paige is responsible for designing and producing those. Yeah, so the banners are a huge part of how the parade committee pays for the parade. So the parade is free, you know, for Chelmsford citizens. No taxpayer to money. No right. taxpayer um, money. And so we really rely on the banner sales to enable us to plan out this amazing Chelmsford event. Um, so twice a year, we Red Mill Graphics comes up with a banner design, one winter, one summer, and we create a flyer, create promotional materials for that banner. Um, both seasons are $500, and the business purchaser or you know individual person or family, um, they tell us whatever they want on the banner, whether it be a logo or just text, or they could even design what they wanted for that space on the bottom and we build them all out. We do all the setup, we do all um, the proofing for it. I believe you know our count for this summer surpassed history. I think we're up to 72 banners, which is really amazing. Wow. Um, and all thanks to everyone on the committee really pitching in and you know getting the word out of these mm -hmm. banners. So it's really a team effort. Um, but and really fun and rewarding once you do see them all up on in town and the DPW is a huge huge help I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, I build all the maps out for each area of town um, You know each person who does purchase one gets to pick you know preferably where they want But we do it's on a first come first right. basis. So um, we try and make as many people um, happy and at the end of this, when they do get brought down, most people get them back. So it's one of those things where I think people hang them in their offices, um, their own homes. Well, certainly, they own it at that yep, point. They yep, they do own right the on. banner. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is their banner. So um, we try and be diligent in returning them mm -hmm. back. And um, it's a great program we have and something that really works with helping us get the funds to you know, pay for all these bands and participants in the parade. And, the, uh, and again, the locations are for the banners, the center? Yeah, center, drum hill, and vinyl. Okay. And it really dresses up the town oh, for the absolutely. holiday mm -hmm. season, for the 4th of July season. And then going into the holidays, Paige at Red Mill also designs a banner that has those festive maybe holiday lights, a holiday theme. More of theme. a winter theme. Mm -hmm. right. right, and it's, yeah. it's uh, kudos to Paige when she designs these, she just doesn't design them for, you know, one day, like a holiday. It, right. it's, it's something that like, extends through the winter season especially. Yeah. It, it looks good yeah. all the time, looks regardless great. of the season. Yeah, right. No, it you're right, it really does dress up the town, I mm -hmm. think, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, to hear that we, uh, apparently it is a record number of banners that we have, and we have more uh, placements up in Vinyl Square than, than we have in the past, mm -hmm. which I think is very important. Sure. Because that's a, that's a gateway into the town. That you know, is, People yes. coming down from New Hampshire and Tingsboro and so forth. So that's, that's very important. So we, you mentioned, uh, uh, we've talked a little about the cost of the parade and the fact that the banners fund a large part of it, but what are some of the other funding mechanisms that we have? Uh, we have sponsorships and... and uh, yeah. yeah. Sure, you so, can talk about that. Um, other sponsorships. So the banner program is one type of sponsorship, but we have other levels. Mm -hmm. um, this year is red, white, and blue, um, which are huge, you know, opportunities for us to raise even more money. They the red sponsorship starts at five thousand, white twenty five hundred, and blue this year was fifteen hundred, and they are all different levels where some of them include summer winter banners, mm -hmm. um, some of them is where you have banners in the actual parade. Um, there's different, you know, things that you get with a higher level of sponsorship, but those are really amazing opportunities if a company wants more um, brand recognition advertising mm -hmm. throughout the parade and parade day and pre parade day so um it, it helps i think if people want more you know brand right. awareness well yeah because if you are an entrant in the parade and you are a business and so forth obviously it's an it's an opportunity to to advertise and get your name and your brand out there whatever it happens to be and people are pretty creative i think 
uh, when, it, when it comes to And that. it's a nice way to, for local businesses to mm -hmm. show their support of mm -hmm. a, one of the major events in Chelmsford mm -hmm. um, each year. So a lot of these businesses do it year after year after year, and it just shows their support of the Chelmsford community. Mm. So we have how many folks now on the parade committee, uh, roughly? Uh, oh, I'd say about 12. I have a list right here. Okay. Um, I could go through the list if you'd like, but uh, yeah, we have uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's eleven right now that are listed, and then we have uh, another gentleman that will be appointed next year. Okay, and then then we also have some ad hoc people. We have a representative from the police department. We have a representative from the fire department that helps with some of the logistics thing. I, you know, it's uh, funny. I've been on the parade committee. I think this is my third year. My wife joined four years ago and she talked me into coming on and I, I have to say I've, I've enjoyed it but a uh, comment that you made earlier was that we've got some really veteran folks on that committee so the first two years I don't think I said five words mm -hmm. right you know you yes, sit there here. and you learn mm -hmm. but it's it's just amazing the the cooperative spirit that we have and the everybody as you said everybody pitches in and does contribute something okay we all have our little little areas uh, to contribute. Uh, it's the only committee I know of in town, a standing committee, that has a one-year appointment term. Mm. And it's also the only committee I know of where the membership potentially is unlimited. And the select board says this every week when they talk about their vacancies, you know. So uh, I suppose if 35 people showed up at a I don't know what would, what would we do if thirty five uh, people yeah, showed we, up. We would need a new meeting yeah, space. We'd have yeah. to likely. We'd have to change the venue, I think. But right. Mm -hmm. it, it. I was a little concerned because I, it, when when I first went on, I thought you know we were having ten or twelve people, and I thought, boy, is this enough? You know, because I kind of knew what the scope sure. of the activity mm -hmm. was, but then I realized that you know we we had some long standing folks on there. They've done this forever and they know exactly well, what has to be done. There, there is a lot involved and you know yeah. just at our last meeting you know we, we had um, uh, Jason Poor come in representing the police department right. to help us with logistics and then we had Josh Abbott from the fire department mm -hmm. because they all play a part in this as well. And then when you allude to the longtime members uh, Rick Romano, Brian Kieran, Reedy, mm -hmm. um, Eric Lindstedt is fairly new and he's brought a ton of energy to oh, the committee. Oh, absolutely. And Jeff Hardy and uh, Chuck Marcella, Lynn Marcella, and if I'm forgetting anybody, I apologize, but these people really have it down. And mm -hmm. Paige is such a great addition because she's taking care of that, the banner piece of it. Like you, Sam, I'll sit at a meeting and just nod my head and listen and, and you know, contribute where possible. Right. But when parade day hits, then we're, it's all hands then on it's deck. everyone's rolling up right. their sleeves and everyone's jumping in. And people might not be um, listed as members of the parade committee, but people do show up that day and right. really help. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yes, ab absolutely right. And it's, it's uh, I won't say it's organized chaos because, again, I think we've got it down. But you're right. The, the night before, on the 3rd, when we have to set up the, mm -hmm. the uh, reviewing stand and decorate it and everything and, uh, you know, uh, that's a lot of work, and uh, then the actual day itself, uh, the logistics of it. Um, when people, the, when the units come in, let's talk a little bit about that process. So, I know one thing you're doing, Paige, is you're, you're keeping track of the actual marching units in the parade. Mm -hmm. People sign up, they request to be in, t talk a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so right now if you want to participate to be in the Trumpsford Parade. And you, there's still time, right? There's still time. Okay. Yep, um, there's a join us button on our website um, where you would just fill out an application. It would have your name, you know, contact information, what you want to be, whether it's a float, marching band, or marching group, um, band, or vehicle, um, and then details about what if you have music, how many people you'll have, um, and a little blurb of what you would want it, what to be said at the reviewing stand. Um, and then that gets pulled into email, and then we review all them, and I make an Excel sheet, fill out the data that was in your application, and then that's how we kind of gauge what we have for months, honestly, because we're starting to get applications, I'd say, 
starting in November, mm -hmm. even, yep. you know, the fall being like, from people being like, hey, we're ready for next summer, can't wait, it's our favorite event, make sure you have us down, and we're like, great. Um, but it is a lot, because a lot comes in that, you know, we need to review, and um, we'll collaborate at the meetings, and then once we have a finalized participant list, that's what we'll use to build out the parade, based on whether they're a band, marching group, um, we, we strategize placement in the parade based on what they fill out. So it's really important that our participants are filling out yes. it to the most accurate right. ability. Um, and then sometimes on parade day, you know, what they say they have is completely different than what they do show up with. So then it's that, it's has that happened, yes. organized chaos <laughs> and the scramble of like, okay, they have no more music. We need to put them where there is music so it's not too much of a lag of no music in the parade. So... Um, like you said, it's organized chaos, but you know, these months leading up to it is how we're, how we prepare ourselves in the best way in order for us to be able to manage those chaotic moments. Yeah. And it, it, uh, you mentioned that list and <laughs> on parade day, I think there's three copies of the list. There's mm -hmm. one in the order mm -hmm. they're going to march, mm -hmm. one alphabetically, mm -hmm. and then one by Unit. what category, yeah, what category they're marching in. So. Yeah. For the last two years, I've had the pleasure of lining everybody up and then sending them off. Chuck Marcel is in the background lining up all the floats and everything. We're trying to organize the politicians. And then once the parade starts, well, yeah, we, yeah they, they start if, if coming out. If that's even possible, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they start coming out. But even during check-in, which people mm -hmm. start checking, what time, 8 o'clock, the eight table opens up. Yeah. Yep. But Check people in. start checking in and they'll say, I'm with so-and-so, so I got to go down the list. All right, you're going to be over there where the bands are, or you're going to be over, that right. is, over there. And it's... That's, that's the worst job. It's the, tough. The check-in table. So uh, it was a two years ago, and, and uh, my wife says, well, where can I be useful? And I said to Brian, I says, put her on... I said, she's a retired teacher, 39 years. Put her on the check-in check table. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get by her. So... I know you and Candy did it last mm -hmm. year. You guys did a fantastic yes. job. It was yep. unbelievable yep. what you did. You know, everything just came off so well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we had a little glitch with the parade marshal, but we got through sure. that, and, 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 and it was fine. You know, right. uh, um, it was one of the better, I think last year was one of the better parades. What kind of impressed me this year, though, was you talk about Eric and, and his work with the bands. That was it two meetings ago, we sat down and... We're all set with the bands. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, wait a minute. Uh, last year we were kind of scrambling at the end, <laughs> right. I, I, the way I thought. It's so, amazing what he did. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just amazing. And uh, talk a little bit about the logistics of the bands and you know, how do we get bands. And, and uh, it's not that easy. No, and, you know, going on the history and hearing the stories, yeah. I mean, Rick Romano has been instrumental in that, too. I mean, he's brought bands in from Canada. Mm -hmm. This year, I think we have one either from Michigan or Wisconsin or something coming Yeah, we in. have a group traveling. I forget the state, but they had reached out to us saying they were yeah. traveling. and um, They contacted us. Yes. Yeah. So we're famous. We're famous, so what would I understand, and we we're talking about one of the meetings where this group does tour around, mm -hmm. and they were going to be in the Northeast, and Chelmsford came up, and they mm -hmm. said, we're going to march in the 4th of July parade in Chelmsford. Wow. And keeping on top of these bands and following up with them, it's because of members of our committee that mm -hmm. will follow up with these people, respond to emails, mm -hmm. and... Um, it's they just stay on top of it and if there was a band that was great and we want them back they reach out to them mm -hmm. but sometimes a lot of these bands are overextended so you have a great mm -hmm. band and then they have to find another one to kind of replace mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a lot of hard work and uh, organization and, mm -hmm. and this year you know kudos to the team it, it really came together it, I, I, I was astounded at, at you know, yeah. the finality of it uh, you know so far out from the parade because mm -hmm. I, I remember last year it was kind of down to the wire I think and that's not due to anybody not doing what they were supposed to do it's just the it's just the, the way it was you know right. whatever the circumstances were at the year so right yeah uh, it, it's great and uh, I would say uh, the bands probably represent the major expense of the parade is that an accurate statement I mean uh, yeah. tip typically what's a band charge to participate well, I think I, I'm thinking it's about twenty-five hundred to yeah. three thousand. Some of them could be higher. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's they have to cover travel. That's my understanding. Yep, yep. yep. upwards of four thousand. I don't think it goes past forty five hundred. Mm. Um, fees definitely are increasing each year, um, which we've noticed. Right. And then the only other groups that you know have fees are the carnival groups, like the entertainment type groups. Um, but yeah, the bands are, are great. We always try and have a diverse amount of bands and it's something that we start on, I think in December, we were like, okay, sure. we need to send an email out to all of our bands now. Um, and I'll give another kudos to Eric because last time he wasn't on the committee, we didn't have a great way of organizing the data of the bands mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because Eric's on board, he's been able to create this Excel sheet which really enables us to track them and communicate with them all the time. And so that's how we're able to really keep on top of them, like Kirk said, um, to make sure we get their participation in early. And uh, with Eric, it seems, well, he seems to enjoy the, the music aspect of it too. I mean, sure. he, he, likes, he likes managing that process. So I think we're very, very, very well served uh, mm -hmm with him, uh, well, certainly looking forward to that, but that's not the uh, extent of the music activity. It goes beyond the parade. So what, what are we doing this summer for uh, Oh, so the summer concert, concert series, series yeah. yeah. So the parade committee kicked off this program that they're gonna be four concerts mm -hmm. during the month of July on the Common. Um, I don't have the bands off the top of my head, but um, each, I believe it's on a Saturday they're having it. Each Saturday there'll be a band down on the common for all the public to come down, bring the family, bring the kids, mm -hmm. and there'll be entertainment throughout the month of July. And that just extends, you know, the, I think, uh, the feeling and the spirit of Chumps are over the 4th of July. It extends it through the whole month. Mm -hmm. So this is the first year we're doing it. Uh, this is something that um, Eric really got behind and... Uh, the committee thought it was a great idea, and we're really curious to see how it goes. And I, I think it's going to be be a hit. They just did a post today yep. on Facebook. Oh, really? I, I shared it on my Facebook okay. page, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to go down and, and see what it's all about. It's, yep. it's going to be wonderful. And the bands are, you know, mainstream rock and roll and that mm -hmm. type of entertainment, so it's a little bit for everybody. Okay, yep. good. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm looking. I'm actually looking forward to that. And again, yeah. folks, it's uh, it's free, right? Yeah. How many things are free? <laughs> right. You, stro free? you stroll down to the common. Uh, Six to eight. Uh, and it'll be what uh, Saturday night. Uh, one of those yeah, I believe Saturday it's night, 6 to 8 p.m. Right, yeah, okay. Um, 6 to 8 p.m. <laughs> um, and yeah. there'll be food trucks um, each Saturday. And hopefully we have good weather for all four. And I think yeah. it'll be rain or shine, but TBD yes. on that. Um, the parade is rain or shine. I was going to bring that yep. up. Yes, so if it rains and, and I just don't. It almost never rains, it seems. And mm. No, last year was funny, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. <laughs> I, I remember we pulled in at about eight o'clock, and it was spritzing. It, it was spritzing, right? And then the participants started to show up. It stopped raining. We got everybody lined up. The parade starts at ten a.m. with the uh, firing salute by the police department at the honor guard, and the parade kicked off. And I think at twelve o'clock, because the parade's usually about two hours. Mm -hmm. It started spritzing. Yeah, like five that. minutes Just after like the last year yeah. it goes. Yeah. It, it, it was pretty amazing. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was uh, some somebody was washing out. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. then the rest of the yeah. day was a washout. Yep. So, and, and, and I remember every year we get the same thing from Jeff. Jeff, it's not going to rain. Right. It's not going to rain. And he, and he said the same thing last year, and he was absolutely right. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, um, a couple things that... Uh, I do want to mention, uh, again, it's uh, all comers really are eligible to participate in the parade. I mean, there, I can't recall uh, uh, that we have any severe restrictions. And we usually get uh, political contingents from our local politicians. Sure. And uh, this year, I think we, we have a few that uh, have indicated that they're going to march. So, so that'll be interesting. And then we have, uh, of course, our local 
uh, select board and uh, school committee and mm -hmm. those uh, types of, of folks that march as well. One of the things that I think uh, I'd like to mention, because we talk uh, off, obviously about the volunteer support and the participation of folks on the parade committee, we have excellent uh, input also from the town manager and uh, select board member Pat Wojcic, who happens to be chair of the board this year. But she's, she's participated for as long as I can remember. She's been, uh, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, an ex officio member of the committee, as, as has Paul. And their assistance has been invaluable, you know, because they're able to navigate, help us navigate some of the logistics issues that we might have Correct. and yep. coordination with the DPW and things like that, which also has been phenomenal. Years ago, parade committee members used to hang the banners. I know. Yeah. Well, that's some of our original members were doing yeah. that, and they mm -hmm. tell us stories where they're on a rickety ladder, oh, yeah. one yeah. person's holding the ladder. So the yeah. average age now is 15, 20 years advanced, so nobody wants to do that anymore. So thankfully, uh, we're able to get the, the DPW to step up, and they do a they do a fantastic, uh, fantastic job. So again, we did say if it rains, parade goes on, bring your umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the um, the crowd and uh, the chairs. You want to talk about the chairs? Well, well sure. Let's. How about we do this? I mean, <laughs> if if people don't know, the parade does kick off at ten o'clock in the morning, and it's preceded by the John Carson Absolutely. Road Race. Mm -hmm which is a really nice event. I mm -hmm. mean, they get to run in this race, local race, and the streets are already filled with people waiting for the parade. Um, and as Sam alluded to regarding the chairs, if you live in Chelmsford and you've driven down North Road three days prior to the parade, you're wondering what are all these chairs doing out there? And some families have a tradition that they're gonna sit in the same place as they did last year or <laughs> 10 years ago, and they put their chairs down. And the funny thing is, Sam, and you, are, you and I have talked about this before, I don't think I've ever heard of a legitimate stair, uh, chair theft. No, I don't think so. The, yeah. I, and after that rainy day, last the parade uh, last year, I remember driving down North Road, all the chairs were gone except for one. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And this was three hours after the parade. So it's funny how they do that. But so the parade does start at 10 a.m., runs for about two hours. It starts at the McCarthy Middle School and goes right down into the common. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it, it's a great event. And each, each unit stops in front of the reviewing stand mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, announcers, uh, typically I think it's Lynn and Jeff mm -hmm. that, that typically do that. They'll, as Paige alluded to earlier in the show, if you're going to participate in the parade, you fill out the application and there's a spot there for you to put a little blurb and, and, and your, your uh, message will actually be read at the reviewing stand, you know, so you'll get identified and so on and so forth. Um, so, uh, let's see, we talked about the uh, summer concert series, the road race. Uh, is there anything else that we need? We've got about two minutes left. Is there anything else you want to bring up? I'd also just like to add that if anyone has any questions about scheduling or parade mm -hmm. events on the 3rd or the 4th, to follow us on Facebook because we will be super active uh -huh. this year on you know a calendar, times of events, locations, things like that. So I would definitely refer, it suggests people to refer to that if there's any questions about mm -hmm. timing or anything about rain updates as well as the summer um, mm -hmm. concert on the Common series. We're going to be posting updates regarding that as well. Um, so I wanted to add that in. Can you give us the website for the parade committee? Do you know it off the top of your the head? Website? Yeah. The website? Or the Facebook it's, page? Uh, fa well, the Facebook the page Facebook is page. just um, Chelmsford Parade. Okay, but if people want to fill out an application. Then it's ChelmsfordParade.com. Okay, Chelmsford I'm pretty Parade. sure. Um, yes, I think I'm you, pretty sure. I think I asked you that um, a week ago. <laughs> yeah, it's ChelmsfordParade.com. So. If not, find us on Facebook. It might be easiest, and then our website's through there. Okay, good. Yep. Good. That's good. Okay, so we're just about out of time. The only uh, thing I would like to mention in the last few minutes is uh, we do have two people who are going to be honored, as we do every year. We have uh, a hometown hero, and this year's hometown hero will be Mike Donahue, who recently retired from the Chelmsford Fire Department after 30 years of continuous service and progression up through the ranks. He retired at the rank of deputy chief. Mike is, is, a, is, a, is a Chelmsford townie, 
and he's a real contributor, and that's great. And we parade marshal this year will be Dave McLaughlin, who is known for his 35 years of continuous service oh. on the uh, Chelmsford Conservation Commission. And Dave has been absolutely instrumental in making sure that uh, our protected areas stay protected and away from the developers. So we're out of time. Come to the parade. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam.